Good day, everyone. Welcome to Rottnest Island, home of the Quokka. Join me as I learn about these intriguing creatures that have gone from rat to rock star. I'll discover interesting facts about their gait, get up close with that world-famous smile, and even experience their promiscuous mating habits. In 1696, Dutch explorer Willem de Vlaming actually named this place Eiland tot Rottnest, meaning the island of the rat nest, because he mistook these cute critters to be giant rats. They are in fact marsupials, short-tailed scrub wallabies, and the name quokka is probably derived from the Noongar word quagga. So I'm starting my pages off by warming up with a few contour drawings. The first being blind, so I'm not looking at the page while I draw from a still image. The footage was taken from a recent holiday I spent at Rottnest Island in early February. I decided to nature journal the quokkas once I got home because they prefer to come out around evening and this way I could enjoy my time with them. One advantage to making this page after the trip is that I could slow down, rewind and freeze the videos to allow me to capture their poses and movement. Quokkas are macropods, so just like kangaroos and wallabies, they've got huge feet and they can hop. Amazingly, they can also climb trees if necessary. They like to rest on their hind legs and can use their front paws for holding food like leaves. Here I explore the different positions of a quokka while it's moving forwards on all four limbs. It begins by shifting weight to the front paws and lifting its bottom half while keeping the tail on the ground. Then it swings its back legs forward and places them on either side of the front paws. Now it can rest its weight on the back legs and either sit up or move forward again. This leaves characteristic tracks in the sand around the island, with the tail being dragged and the large back feet periodically alongside it. As you can see, they're quite short creatures, reaching only about knee high. They're familiar around humans, and maybe perhaps a little bit too friendly. You see, when we got back to our tent the first night, we discovered one of them had snuck inside and found our nut mix, and left a nice little puddle too. They really shouldn't be touched or fed human food, because they can actually fend for themselves and it can make them sick. Their tail does resemble that of a rat, as it's less hairy than the rest of the body. Quokkas actually have relatively short tails compared to other wallabies. After the movement study, I decided to draw the quokkas from different angles, such as from behind and sitting up, as well as their adorable habit of holding their front paws clasped together. They are the only mammals, other than humans, found on the island and that's probably because they can survive in an environment almost completely devoid of fresh water. They used to be abundant on the mainland, but their numbers drastically fell once dingoes arrived around 3,500 years ago, and then foxes in the late 1800s. Today, they can be found on some smaller islands off the coast of Western Australia, like Rottnest, and in scattered populations in the southwest all the way down to Albany. Quokkas are listed as vulnerable by the IUCN due to predators, land clearing and habitat loss. I find the chubby face of a quokka hard to capture, so I focus on some close-up headshots, including their world-famous smile. See, they've earned their reputation as Australia's happiest animal and are a major tourist draw card to the island to join in the quokka selfie trend, just like Roger Federer and Chris Hemsworth. You might be wondering how these mammals got to the island in the first place. Well, Rottnest Island wasn't always an island, despite lying 18 kilometers off the shore of Fremantle today. It became separated from the mainland around 7,000 years ago. There's evidence the Aboriginal people occupied it before the sea levels rose, but it was uninhabited when the European explorers arrived. In Noongar mythology, the island is known as Wajamup, which means the land across the sea where the spirits are, 
and it holds a deep cultural connection to the Wajuk Noongar people. It's finally time to add some watercolour to show their grey-brown fur and highlight parts of my page to make the headings and sections stand out. At the end I also add a few interesting facts from some online research and finish the second page off by noting down my observations from when two quokkas decided to show me how quokka mating works right next to my feet under the table. Let's just say the other quokka wasn't happy. Thanks for watching and if you want to see more Aussie nature journaling adventures remember to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.